You know, I find in general European kids, not all of them, I don't want to like totally generalize, but a lot of the European kids tend to like really hard drum and bass. Maybe not in England so much, but a lot of the definitely Eastern Europe, places like Holland, like they just love hard drum and bass. Um, kids here seem to be a bit more open minded, they like a little more like, I mean, kids here can really do with all styles. People in Europe are very specific about the kinds of drum and bass that they like, and most of the time it's hard. So, mm -hmm. so they though. have their own taste. Oh yeah, yeah, they're but they're, yeah. I mean, in the states, I, I feel like in the states, I can pretty much put whatever I'm, I'm feeling at the moment. In Europe, I kind of need to focus more on what I'm playing because kids are just very, very specific about what they like, and most of them like really hard drum and bass. Absolutely. Do you feel that EDM becoming mainstream, and of course, um, people like Skrillex winning uh, Grammys with their bass music and all this, is helping the community? itself or do you think that it's kind of corrupting it or what's your thought? Well, it's, a hard, it's a hard question to answer you know I, I've thought about it I mean on one hand I think it's great that you know success of people like Skrillex are bringing more people into the rave scene. The issue that I have with that is that I feel like the people that come in you know, for me when I got into it I like was really I tried to be as educated as I could about the music I was listening to the DJs I was listening to and I feel like a lot of the new kids come in and it's like, woo, yeah, what's this? This is cool, yeah. And, they, and it's like they don't, they don't really under, they don't really, are, they're not super knowledgeable about what, you know, they can't, I mean, they appreciate, but they don't, they don't their, their taste level, is, it's not really sophisticated, their taste level. And I feel like that's why you have people that perform now, like DJs that don't DJ really, and like people don't even know the difference, they don't care, and it's like that type of, Person, you know, it's, and it's because you know the the average raver really doesn't doesn't really care to really find out like what is going on or like become more informed as to who they're listening to. So I guess that would be the, the dark side of the dark side of the scene is back in the day when it was underground, you had to really want to you know search out the music and search out the artists, and you really had to kind of be really motivated and want you have that thirst for knowledge of that. Now that it's become a, a lot more mainstream, more you're getting like more mainstream. Type mentality, which is like they just don't look behind it too much. Yeah, they don't. They don't like do, you know, do the research. It's just kind of like it's present. It's almost like a surface level of of interest in it, rather than like from someone from my era or, or other, you know, even, even now, like you're really into it and like you really want to understand every aspect of the scene. Yeah, and I think that comes hand in hand with learning how to DJ, for example, from sure. vinyl records and feeling the vinyl and having it in your ear. It, it, it comes from really wanting to actually DJ, DJ. Right. You know, like really learn how to do it. You know, it's not. It's actually not that hard. But the way people deal with DJ nowadays, it's like the hardest fucking thing you can imagine. It's. I mean, it's hard on a level, but it's not that hard. People are just. It's like people are afraid of it, but. You know, nowadays apparently you can get away with not DJing, and that's DJing, so... Yeah, the times forever. are changing. Some say for the better, some say for the worse. Uh -huh. um, at the same time, you know, in Vegas we see a lot more of the drum and bass scene coming up. And uh, we actually have some of the bigger, bigger venues actually playing uh, uh, bass music, you know, believe it or not. Um, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, actually they're beginning to pick that up. Do you think that within the next five years we're, we're going to see drum and bass per se in uh, the forefront? You're going to hear an I mean, you know, I, 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 you know, I've been doing this since before drum and bass existed and the thing is, is like, I'd like to see that. The reality is that, and this has always been drum and bass's Achilles heel, is that it's just fast music, you know, it's challenging, it's not, you know, a lot of shit that's big now like trap music, it's like, I like trap, and it's like lowest common denominator. You don't have to really think about it. It's just really simple music for the most part. Drum and bass is challenging, you know, and I'd like to see that, but, um, you know, who knows? Is it ever is it gonna be in the forefront? No, but hopefully we'll have more of a resurgence, because dubstep kind of ate away at like the bass audience for drum and bass. And like, a lot of the kids that came in, the newer kids that came in via dubstep never really experienced drum and bass. And, and, and um, yeah, it would be cool if uh, people started getting their head around it. I mean, I think, you know, in my mind, I like dubstep as well, but I think drum and bass is, you know, it's it's dubstep for like, it's like the more, it's 
more sophisticated music for the dubstep generation. You know, dubstep is like you know elementary school and drum and bass is college. So absolutely, that's my attitude about it. Everybody, um, do your research on uh, the old school and this guy's <laughs> old school right here. There's a lot of popular DAWs out there, and we're not affiliated with any of them. Um, but what would you prefer more? Inboard gear, outboard gear? Do you think it's kind of? I worked on both. I mean. I actually have a whole studio of gear that I had when I lived in Philadelphia that's in storage, but it's like a full mixing board, like all all outboard stuff. And uh, you know, I think you know, just the way technology is now, you can get powerful software that can do pretty much anything. And I feel it's you might be able to get a slightly better sound out of the hardware, but it depends on how your mix down skills are. You know, if you're good enough, you can do you can mix down digitally, and it sounds better than other people mixing down the outboard gear. It really comes down to what's the most convenient way for you to produce, and what's going to allow you to produce, yeah, you know, more music more efficiently, more conveniently. Absolutely. For most people, that's like on a laptop. You know, I, if I if I'm producing on a laptop, I can do it in a hotel room. I don't have to be in the studio with all my gear. So. You know, it's, it's like you know, like taking photos. It's like what the best camera is the one that's easiest to carry with you. That's why a lot of people take pictures with their iPhone, and that's it because you always have it on you. So you have worked with a lot of people before. Mm -hmm. um, who would you think that um, if right now you would have to choose, who would you like to collaborate with most in the studio? If you could choose anybody, alive or dead? Oh, wow. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I. I feel like a lot of the times when I collaborate with people, one that I feel in, in a sense this is maybe my own ego talking, but I kind of compare myself on a level to like the mentality of like a Rick Rubin who produced original Beast Boys albums, and what he does is he goes in, and he actually works with an artist, and he he takes the core, the essence of that artist, and helps like kind of magnify it, and kind of brings his efforts are to bring the most out of the people that he works with. Right. And I feel like that's what happens when I work with people, like when I work with Bear, and I work with Tech Kitchen. It's like, yeah. I kind of like, we took like their sound, but then we also made it a little more layered, sophisticated, like complex in a way. So, I mean, for me personally, just because he's popular now and not to sound ridiculous, but I mean, I would actually like to do track with Skrillex, with Sonny, because I think he's super talented, and I would love to see like how, by me working with him, maybe I can take like what he's good at and maybe make it even more, just maybe a bit heavier, and a little more, yeah, a little more, maybe even a little darker than what he usually does. I think that would be an awesome experience. And also to see like how he works through his studio process and how he gets the sounds that he does, I mean, that would be informative for me on many levels, so. Killed it tonight here in San Diego. We were here at Spin Nightclub. This is EDM Nightlife, Victor Savelle. We hang out with Diesel Boy. Absolutely. Be safe on your travels. Thanks, man. Bring the world more the quality uh, <laughs> drum and bass tracks and take it easy, man. That's my goal. Thank you. Absolutely. See you guys later.